Hello everyone, this is Miss Sally. I hope you are doing well. This video is a summary for the important elements that we covered during this week. Our story for this week is First to Fly by Peter Busby. In this story, we will learn about how the Wright brothers invented the first airplanes. Let's start. So, the Wright brothers invented the first working airplane in 1903. However, that was not their first try. They tried two other planes first. Let's know more about these planes. The first glider. As you can see from the picture, it is a simple glider. Before they built the first plane, Orville and Wilbur Wright made gliders without motors, starting in 1900. Their first glider was the first that a person could ride in, but it was destroyed in a storm. The second glider. This is the second glider. They add something to this glider. Let's see. The second glider in 1909 had bigger wings, but the wings pinned down with the weight of the pilot and it was hard to steer. They put this in a shelter, but both the shelter and the glider uh, destroyed by the weather. Then they have the third glider. Let's know more about this glider. On the third glider in 1902, it's after two years, they added a back rudder that they could steer so they would not crash or break. break. They also made the wings stiffer. They, they made the wings stronger. The third glider worked and they used it to make a powered plane. Eventually, the Wright brothers made a plane that his army could use. They learned from their mistakes and got success. So, the, the lesson here or the theme from this story is to keep, to keep trying until you reach uh, your goal, okay? So, that's it for our story. Let's move now to our vocabulary. Now, let's know more about the elements of this story. First, to fly story. So, first, what is the genre for this story? The genre is nonfiction. Why it is nonfiction? Because a story involves real people and real events. That is why it is nonfiction. Is it fact or opinion? What do you think? Of course it is fact because as we said it involves real events and real people so it is fact. We have a true information. Who's the main characters in this story? We have Wilbur and Orville Wright or we can say the Wright brothers. The setting for this story is the place and the time. Where and when does the story take place? The setting of this story is spring in 1900 uh, on the island of North Carolina. The plot. The plots mean the events in the story. So we have the beginning, the middle, and the end. The Wright brothers are trying to make a glider fly in the air. And in the middle, they made one flight only for s four seconds, but it is crashed. And at the end, they made a glider that flew in the air. They were the first people to fly. So the plot is a literary term used to describe the events that make up a story, the main part of a story. Now let's move to the conflict. Conflict in a story is the struggle between opposing forces. So, the brothers can't get the, gl uh, the glider to fly. Also, they crashed when it is in the air for four seconds. So, this is the problem. But they solve it. They solve their, uh, this, 
their situation and they finally got the glider to fly in the air how can trail and errors lead to no inventions if you keep trying to make errors and fix them eventually it will work how does the author organize the text the words the author uses show that it is organized the words are next then finally and at first the author uses the phrase quote into life in this story why does the author use this personification so the engine had a hard time starting it did not start right away and when it said code into life it means it finally started running the theme the theme is the lesson from the story uh, what we learned from the story if you are trying a couple times to make it better then you might achieve your goal so the theme here is to keep trying until you achieve your goal the boys tried different ways to fly the gliders in the air but they finally do it and they was the first per person who invented the airplane and the concluding the right uh, boys flew the glider in the air without crashing this is the end we have six target vocabulary this week it is from the story first to fly let's look the first word is glider glider is a light aircraft that is designed to fly for a long period but without using an engine for example the glider was soon lost si sight of in the clouds so this is a picture for the glider a new glider and the next word is incredible incredible mean impossible to believe or hard to believe his story is incredible in the literal sense of the word it means uh, his story is hard to believe impossible to believe supplies is make something needed or wanted available to someone for example the school supplies books for the children so if you want to to prepare your school supplies for example you have this picture you have to prepare pencils notebooks sticky notes sharpeners erasers and for example if you want to discuss uh, food supplies you can say tea coffee spoon a cup so supplies is something needed or wanted cockpit a cockpit is a compartment for the pilot and sometimes also for the crew it in, in an aircraft or in a spacecraft so if you see from this picture we have a special place for the pilot and for the crew this place we call it cockpit scorching what do we mean by scorching scorching means very hot it was scorching and there wasn't a cloud in the sky so it was very hot sheltered it's a place protected from bad weather for example i picked a sheltered site for the tent this could be a sheltered that's it for our vocabulary let's now move to our grammar our topic in grammar for this week is future continuous tense in this powerpoint we are going to know more about the future continuous tense we are going to know about well and be going to and how and when we use them let's start so definition what we mean by future continuous we use future continuous to show a continued or ongoing action in the future for example i will be waiting for you tomorrow it is an ongoing action which will happen in the future the sentence formation whether the subject is singular or plural rules remains the same so we add first the subject plus 
will plus be plus verb ing then object so we have they which is the subject will be running tomorrow so they will be running tomorrow now future continuous in positive as i said we add the subject plus will plus be plus verb ing you can write it in two ways you can write it i will in a separate words or you can combine them together l I, uh, as this one so this is th this is i will you will he will she will it will you will we will they will so both of the ways are correct it's up to you so for example i can say i will be reading or she will be eating for example or you will be cooking now let's know more about will we use will to make a prediction or a statement about something will be true or will occur in the future the formula for will in the positive we put subject plus will plus be plus verb ing. So, the example here, you will be traveling to Paris next week. And in negative, we add not after will. So, we have the subject plus will plus not plus be plus verb ing. So, you will not be traveling to Paris next week. Interrogative means questions. Here in this situation, we just swipe up between the subject and will. So, will plus the subject plus be plus verb ing. And, of course, the question mark. Will you be traveling to Paris next week? Now, let's know more about be going to. We use be going to to express a prior plan or something that intended to do in the future. In positive statement, we put subject. Here you have to put verb to be. Am, is, or are. It depends about the subject. Going to, then, plus be, plus verb ing. So, the subject here is you. So, we choose are, because we have you. Then we put going to, be traveling to Paris next week. And in negative form, it's the same as well. We add not, but we add not after verb to be. So, we have subject plus to be plus not plus going to plus be plus verb ing. You are not going to be traveling to Paris next week. And for interrogative, for the question form, we use we swipe up between the subject and to be, verb to be. So it will become, are you going to be traveling to Paris next week? We put the verb to be first, then the subject, then going to, then be, then the verb ing, and of course, the question mark. In writing, we are going to learn about an opinion essay. So, when we use the opinion essay, we write an opinion essay to give our opinion. We say what we think about a subject and we, uh, we can also add and comment other points of view. So, the structure. First, as usual, we have the introduction. In the introduction paragraph, we have to explain the statement and give our opinion about it. And next we have the paragraphs, the body paragraphs. What we have to do in the body paragraphs, we have to give reasons and evidence to support our opinion. For example, if you have one reason, you have to write up one body paragraph. If you have two reasons, you have to write two paragraphs. If you have three reasons, you have to write three paragraphs. So the number of the paragraphs depends on how many reasons you have. 
Then in the following one, you have to write or the state an opposing opinion, supporting, and you have to support it with evidence too. And in the last paragraph, the conclusion, you have to summarize everything and restate your opinion. Now content. Introduce each paragraph with a topic sentence outlining the main ideas. It is very important to put the topic sentence, the main ideas, and the supporting details. And you have to give a simple facts and examples to support your e ideas. And you have to give a specific reason to support your opinion. And because it is a formal piece of writing, for example, don't use contractions. Don't write about advantages and disadvantages or points for or against. Now, here I have a useful expression. For example, if you want to give, a, a, uh, to give your opinion, you can say, my opinion is that, or I think, I believe, I feel, in my opinion, Personally, I think, to my mind. Now, we have uh, expressions, expressions to support your ideas with evidence. So, for example, if you want to give a simple fact, you can say, it is true that, or it is a fact that, then you have to write your facts here. And, if, for example, if you want to explain a reason or a result, you can say, as a result or uh, my main reason or another reason is if you want to introduce examples you can say for example for instance like especially such as now if you want to list the points if you have points and you have to list them you can say in the first place first of all first second third finally to add more points, if you, uh, if you have more points to add, you can say, furthermore, uh, besides also, and to add contrasting points. Contrasting points mean the opposite points, okay? You can say, on the other hand, however, nevertheless, even though. To conclude, if you want to start writing your conclusion, you can say to sum up or to conclude or in conclusion, if you want to repeat your opinion, you can say, as I have previously said, or as I have mentioned above, then you can repeat your opinion. That's it for writing. This video is about Wright Brothers, their first flight in 1903.
This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for listening and watching. Have a nice day.